We've become so distant from our food that we are losing valuable skills that were once essential to a happy and healthy life. With all the information out there in the world about what you should and shouldn't eat, it's difficult to decide what to do. For us, it's all about tradition. And here we are today in the kitchen. I want to start this video off by saying that I'm not a health expert, I'm not a doctor, I don't have a degree, but we all make our own choices. You have your own opinions, I have my opinions. And I know that this is a pretty heavily debated topic in the health world and probably even in your own home. But uh, I just want to give that disclaimer before I'm not an expert. You make your own choices. I'm making my choices and we all live on. Today we are taking this wonderful stuff. This is pig fat and more specifically this is leaf lard. This is the fat that is on the inside of the cavity of the pig. It is not the same thing as what is on your bacon. This is a more higher quality fat than what you see on the rest of the pig. And we got a decent amount of leaf lard. We love to use lard. We love to use lard and tallow, but of course today we're only doing lard and we like to cook with it. When I do my morning eggs, I only use lard and sometimes I use bacon grease if I have it just because it's a nice flavor, but for the most part I use my lard. So today we're gonna take this solid fat and we're gonna cut it up, we're gonna cook it down for about eight to 10 hours, and we're gonna make some really high quality leaf lard, much higher quality than the stuff you can buy at the grocery store. If you have a good source of leaf lard, especially organic leaf lard, that's gonna be pretty good quality and probably somewhat close to what we're making here today. So, let's roll our sleeves up and let's get to it. We worked incredibly hard for this lard, and of course we got a lot more out of it. We got tons of sausage and bacon and ham and all kinds of things, but, this lard is, is a big deal because it's kind of hard to find. You can't just go to Walmart and find lard, um, or at least near me, you can't go get that. And Kroger doesn't have it, so it's something we have to order online. And I don't like doing that too much. Anything that I can grow on farm, on our homestead, and I know exactly where it came from is a big deal for us. And I'm so thankful that we are able to render this today. So enough chit chat, let's get into it. Got my nice cutting board here. We're gonna open up this lard and we're gonna start slicing it into small cubes and we're gonna put it in a big pot to render. So leaf lard is the highest quality fat on a pig and it doesn't really smell like much, which is what you want. You don't want fat that smells really pungent and uh, leaf lard is not very smelly. So very good stuff. So all we're gonna do with this is I'm gonna unroll this a little bit. And if we have any spots or sometimes there's a little pig hair in there, we're gonna obviously take those out. We're not gonna add those into our lard. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of this off that isn't very appealing. Or if we have a bunch of meat, we're obviously not gonna use that. And any little pieces, we're gonna start throwing it in the pot. And we're gonna be making pieces about that big. Now Ashlyn and I eat a very traditional diet. We try to eat as little processed foods as we possibly can. We don't eat anything with any harmful preservatives. We don't eat anything with artificial sugars. We uh, do our best to eat as clean as we humanly possibly can. And more specifically, we do our best to eat a diet that we as humans have been eating for a very, very long time. One thing that I'm pretty big on is I have a bit of a distrust for new things. You know, living around the Amish is pretty interesting because they, they, you know, whether you agree with what the Amish do or not, I know there's some things that get talked about within the Amish community. They're very nice people. But one thing I think they do pretty well is they, they don't just trust what the next salesman sells them. And they usually, more so like the Mennonites, they tend to let the world test things out. And so when a new thing comes out, whether that be a car or a refrigerator, whatever it is, they tend to let the world test it out, see how it goes, see if there's any side effects, and then at that point, usually years down the road, from what I've noticed, they'll start to actually use those products. 
You know, it seems like any new thing that comes out in the world, there's usually a certain period of time where it takes for people to use it and then potentially discover that it's great or potentially discover that it's extremely harmful. With oils and things like that, in the early 1900s, when Crisco was introduced, there was a lot of propaganda around lard and tallow and animal fats. And these fats are saturated fats, whereas a seed oil is an unsaturated fat. And like I said, I'm not an expert. I'm not, I don't have a health degree. I've just, I've just done a little bit of reading and I'm making my own choices for my own life. And of course you need to do the same. But this lard is gonna be a lot healthier for you and it's gonna cook a lot better. It's not as harmful as like a soybean oil or a vegetable oil. With the rise in diabetes in our country between all the sugar we eat and all the fried foods we eat, I think that you're pretty safe to go back to a lard, go back to a traditional diet, stop eating so many new processed foods. They just aren't good for you. And one of the reasons we eat a traditional diet, not only is it just traditional and it's what we've been doing for a long time, but I, I believe that if we've been eating it for a long time, our bodies can probably process it better than any new product out there. And I trust that a lot more than I trust some commercial on TV saying that seed oils or vegetable oils or Crisco is gonna be a lot healthier than lard. We are down to our last section of leaf lard here. And I'm cutting things out like these little oysters. And like I said, any pieces of meat, we don't want those meat pieces in there as well. It'll make the lard a different color as it starts to brown. So ideally we wanna just have as much pure fat as we possibly can. It's okay to get a little bit in there. And I really wanna encourage you to do your own research. Decide what's good for your family, what's good for your own health, and don't necessarily listen to some guy that's rendering his own lard. Do your own research, make your own choices. I've done plenty of research on the topic. There's many YouTube videos you can watch on the health benefits of lard or the health benefits over vegetable oil. There's plenty of information out there in the world for you. And so I encourage you to do your own research because you don't wanna just listen to some guy on TV. You don't wanna just listen to some guy on YouTube who's cutting up his own lard right now. But this is as unprocessed as you can probably get. We are literally cutting it up and we are gonna be rendering it, which is essentially just melting it down into a liquid and releasing all of that wonderful fat and oil in there. I will say cutting this fat up is extremely satisfying. It cuts so well. It's not like a warm piece of meat, it's, it's nice to cut. And it melts a little bit on your hands. One thing I really encourage people to do if you're just getting into homesteading is to start small. You might have a butcher near you that has a bunch of pig fat he's willing to sell or a bunch of beef fat he's willing to sell to make tallow. And I encourage you to do these things before, you know, there's no point in raising a whole pig if you're not gonna enjoy the process of it. You might as well just buy from the butcher. And so you can test the waters a little bit, try new things before you even get into it. Cause the beauty of it is that you can do this in your apartment. You don't need tons of acres to do this. You don't need to raise a pig to do this. You can just go buy it from a butcher, do it on a small scale. And that is for more than just rendering lard. That's, that works for many things. So now we've got our full pot of pig fat. This is the leaf lard. And we're gonna throw this on the stove and we're gonna add some water to it to get it started. We're gonna bring this pot over to the stove here and we're gonna add about a half of a cup of water to get this lard going. And don't worry, I know we added water into this. It's not gonna mix in. It's actually gonna evaporate out as we're cooking for eight to 10 hours. And what you'll be left with is a really nice liquid fat afterwards. So let's go ahead and start the burner and we'll get this fat rendering and we'll check on it in a little bit. And we are not gonna put a lid on this. We want that water to evaporate. If you put a lid on it, you're gonna have condensation in there and that's not what we want. And when we're cooking this, we're cooking this on low. So I've got this set to two right now cause I'm gonna get it a little bit warm. Once we see some melting, I'm gonna drop it down even lower onto low 
This is slow cooking. You could do this in a crock pot if you wanted to. We don't have a crock pot, so we're going to do it on the stove top today. But make sure you're cooking it on low. If you cook it on high, you're going to end up burning. You're going to end up cooking it, and that's not what we want. We want a nice white lard. We don't want any discoloration, although discoloration is okay. We want nice white lard. You can see already the water is starting to change colors. It's starting to melt a little bit. And so we're just going to come and check on this every hour maybe we're gonna stir it a little bit make sure everything's working good well it's been about an hour and our lard is starting to render down really nice you can see that the lard is starting to fade in color it's not so bright white it's a little bit more gray now we're getting a lot more fluid in there and we're just starting this rendering process we still have a long way to go we still have like eight maybe even nine more hours till we're totally done. But as this fills up with liquid, we can start to take out that liquid, put it into jars and let it harden and cool down. We are about two hours in to our rendering process and this is starting to look really good. It's now filled up with a lot of liquid and you can see the little bits and pieces of fat are getting smaller obviously because they're turning into the liquid, but it's looking good. We're getting there. Our lard has been rendering for about six hours now and it is looking really good. You can see that the actual fat has changed color a little bit. It's a little bit more transparent, I would say, and we have a lot of fluid in there. So I am actually gonna start taking some of this fluid out of there, which is our lard, and we're gonna start putting it into jars. All right. Just taking it off the heat while I do this for a moment. Obviously, we're gonna take the fluid, we're gonna put it into our jars, and we're gonna let our jars cool down. So I've got this really big strainer. I wanna catch all these little bits of fat, and we don't want that into the lard. It wouldn't really matter regardless, but we want a really nice smooth lard. So we're gonna take our pot and our strainer, and we're just gonna pour this into these jars. I'm probably gonna use a little measuring cup so it's a little bit easier. That was about perfect. Making a bit of a mess, but that's okay. Well, we've got about three pint-sized jars out of there. We still have quite a bit of fluid in there and still have a bunch of fat, of course, that still needs to render down so we're gonna put this back on the stove. I'm leaving a little bit of fluid in there because we don't want it to brown or, or uh, burn at the bottom. So we're gonna set this back on the stove. We'll cover these with some lids. And we're gonna let these sit out. Lard is good on the countertop, unrefrigerated for about six months. If you put it in the refrigerator, it's about a year and you can even freeze lard and I'm sure that's essentially indefinitely. So. We are probably just gonna put it on the counter, maybe maybe some of it in the fridge, depending on how much we get out, but we use a lot of lard, we cook a lot with it, so uh, it's gonna go pretty quick, I'm sure. Let's go ahead and get this back up on the stovetop. Now we're just gonna let this render out some more. We still have quite a bit of fluid in there that we will get out at the end, but I think we can still get some more out of this fat. And uh, so we'll probably let it go maybe three, maybe four more hours, we'll have to see. We'll check back in once we're done. Our lard's pretty rendered down. There's just a little bit left in there. I don't think we're gonna get much else out of it, so let's go ahead and drain it in some more pint jars. We got four pints of lard from one pig. Not too sure if that's pretty good because it's our first time rendering lard from our own pig. I'm pretty happy with it. That was super easy. You just leave it on the stove. You don't do a whole lot with it. Like I said, we cook a lot with this. We cook eggs. We even add it to our bacon to lube up the pan a little bit before. I'm no expert, but do your own research. We like using lard over seed oils. We think it's a little bit more healthy. We're gonna let these cool off, but with the rest of this fat we have in here, which I think at this point is pretty much cracklings, we are going to feed it to our chickens. 
We aren't gonna eat this stuff. Maybe somebody does, but we're just gonna give it to our chickens. We're gonna let them devour it, and uh, I'm sure they'll enjoy it quite a bit. It is the next day, and our lard has solidified. It is looking really good. You can see it is totally white now. That's what we're looking for. If you overcook your lard, I've heard it doesn't really make a difference and it'll just change the color a little bit, but ours turned out pretty good. It was a little faded, it was kind of a yellow color, but it got pretty darn white. So I'm really happy with this. It was extremely easy to render and was really hands off. It's kind of like making broth in a way. So if you don't have pigs and you want to do this, you want to make your own lard, just contact your local butcher. I'm sure they have plenty of leaf lard left over. That's something that not everybody wants back in their butcher package. So you might be able to find some pretty good leaf lard at the butcher. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.